Can CJC cause high blood pressure? This is really important because high blood pressure can be that silent killer. Not only does it wreck your whole cardiovascular system, triggering more inflammation in your body, but it can also damage your kidneys. And the kidneys, this is where our longevity is sourced, is right in your kidneys. And it's an unforgotten organ, but the kidneys are what regulate your stress hormones. They regulate all the minerals in your body. They keep your heart rate rhythm nice and even or crazy, too low or too high. And so when you're looking at blood pressure, let's talk about what the research shows on CJC and does it actually increase blood pressure. So in this video, you'll know for a fact what the research shows, but then you're gonna to want to test your blood pressure on your own just to make sure that it's not doing anything to yours. And it's easy to get a blood pressure cuff and check it. You can come into the clinic, we'll check it for you. You can go to like a Walgreens or someplace, Walmart, I've seen them where they got like blood pressure cuffs, lots of places to test it, but don't let this very important metric your blood pressure go missed. Like you do not want to be ignorant around how your blood pressure is doing. Okay, so CJC 1295, one of a phenomenal peptide. We've been using it for about 12 years in our practice with thousands of people. And what our doctors notice is that uh, with CJC 1295, it typically lowers blood pressure. Now, when I went in, as I had the conversation with my team, I was like, have you guys seen anything? Yes, anecdotally, they've seen it generally lowers it, but there's other inputs that we're using in the body. So I tried to go deep in the research and say, well, can it cause high blood pressure, CJC? And the study that I found that was probably the most relevant was not done on CJC, the peptide. It was actually done on growth hormone. And then when we circle back, CJC is increasing growth hormone, working on that same pathway. And so this study was done out of Germany. And the title of the study is Growth Hormone Treatment in Growth Hormone Deficient Adults Effects on Blood Pressure and Vascular Responsiveness. So these were adult subjects, they all had growth hormone deficiencies, and they had growth hormone replacement therapy. And researchers tracked blood pressure changes, vascular responsiveness, and metabolic parameters. And what they concluded in the observation of these patients is that growth hormone therapy reduced peripheral vascular resistance, it improved endothelial function, often modestly lowering blood pressure, in these growth hormone deficient patients that suggested that growth hormone activation can have a neutral to beneficial vascular effects rather than hypertensive ones. Now, when you take CJC, you're going to notice a flushing effect. You're gonna notice that your heart rate can increase for about five minutes after you take it. It's this growth hormone axis shift that's occurring that is activating the receptors. And so that may temporarily increase blood pressure. But generally speaking, if you're getting better sleep, if you're recovering more, if you're watching your resting heart rate, I noticed that when I started taking CJC 1295, I always use it with ipamorelin. But one thing I noticed is that my resting heart rate actually lowered, it dropped. Now that's not always directly correlated to blood pressure. Now, I've been using it off and on for 12 years personally, and I have not seen any change in my blood pressure. My blood pressure has always been in the optimal range. So with you, the thing I said at the beginning is make sure you test your blood pressure before, see what it is, get a blood pressure cuff. You can easily get something on Amazon that's very affordable, very inexpensive. Work with your doctor on this so you make sure you're not doing anything risky. But generally speaking, when you have better endothelial function, which is one of the functions of CJC 1295, in the long run, you're going to see an activation of a nice peripheral response that is optimized to you. So it's not going to bring your blood pressure too low. It's not going to raise it up, but it does seem to be able to protect us against the unwanted bottlenecks in our cardiovascular system where you start getting plaque and arterial accumulations that lead to strokes and other severe consequences. So CJC, what is it? Well, if you look at the mechanism of this, one thing it does, especially when you combine it with ipamorelin, is it's a somatostatin inhibitor. And when you have a somatostatin inhibitor, your body's going to actually produce more growth hormone. The other thing that it does is it calms down the adrenal glands. So it's called your HPA axis, your hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And when you have growth hormone, 
growth hormone calms down that axis so that your adrenal glands say, hey, Reagan's not in a stressful state. Let's release some growth hormone so that he can recover and he's physically active, he's eating great foods, he's got a good mindset, good relationships. That's what you wanna focus on. And when your body's got that environment in there, then you don't have the same excretion of aldosterone from your kidneys. Because this aldosterone, one of the things that it does is aldosterone can raise up your blood pressure. And especially if you've got epinephrine, norepinephrine activation there because of stressful circumstances throughout the day. And if you're not exercising, to metabolize some of these stress molecules, that's where things can start to get derailed and that's where blood pressure starts to creep up. The other thing that you wanna look at with using CJC-1295, and if you're concerned about blood pressure, is you wanna use grip strength as an indicator. So you can get a dynamometer and you can test your grip strength and it's very easy to, to see if you're in the optimal category. You know, someone who's uh, roughly a 50-year-old man, you wanna be able to squeeze about 125 pounds. I think 122 is the appropriate marker. You wanna be between about 80 pounds and 120. I like to be on the stronger side. So one thing you can do to lower your blood pressure if you do have hypertension, just do some farmer's carries, do some dead hangs. Dead hangs are great for your shoulders, great for your back, great for your spine, but those things can help. Just increasing your grip strength, you'll see a lowering of your blood pressure. The other thing you wanna look at is molecules that increase the signaling in the blood. So like nitric oxide, that's where adding in the peptide BPC-157, rarely would you want to do a growth hormone stochratagogue like CJC, ipamorelin, surmorelin, tesamorelin without using some type of BPC-157 because BPC makes the receptors active and it's a dopamine modulator. And so you're just going to feel better when you stack these peptides. And then you're going to get greater levels of nitric oxide signaling. So this is where, you know, eating your beets, taking some beet powder, those things can help. Beets do have a lot of sugar. And yes, I'm gonna get the comments down here. And if you do make kidney stones, avoid the beets. But otherwise, for those of you who love beets like I do, it's great for nitric oxide, which can also help lower the blood pressure. Breathing. <laughs> My Japanese teacher, Dr. Maikao, she used to say, the fastest way to die is to stop breathing. And so just by breathing can help calm down the nervous system and lower your blood pressure. Believe it or not, cold exposure, you get this massive vasoconstriction because all the blood goes to protect the organs against the cold. And But when you get out of that ice bath or that cold plunge, you know, two minutes later, that blood, you know, that's got rushed to the organs, now as your body heats up, you get this nice capillary return so your blood vessels lose that brittleness. It's called sarcopenia. It's a big issue. So even some cold exposure can really help. But CJC in and of itself, confident in saying it does not raise blood pressure. Once again, if you do have an immunogenic response with this, that may be the reason. And so check your blood pressure before and after. Talk to your doctor about this and be smart. Run your labs. Go to agelessfuture.com. My team and I, we can help you get the labs ran. And if you'd like more information on how to get blood work, we've provided a link in the show notes. And so click on that link and you'll be able to meet with someone from the Ageless Future team. Appreciate you being on the channel. I'll see you on the next video.